Whoa, whoa, what? Corona Zombies 2? Already? I realize time has kind of stopped, but how long have I been in here? Have I been in here for two years and it just feels like one month? Oh no, it uh, really is just one month after the first Corona Zombies, and now we have the sequel. Never tell someone that their movie was made quick, because that just challenges them to make an even quicker sequel. Here's how fast the second movie came out. You know what's all happened between the release of the first film and the second one? Well, in the review for the first movie, I was sitting down. And then before this one, I stood up. Like the first film, the movie is available on Full Moon Features, and while there's certainly still some coronavirus references, the movie mainly capitalizes on the Tiger King phenomenon. Well, didn't take this documentary long to go from Coen Brothers farce to Real Housewives. The full title of the movie is Barbie and Kendra Save the Tiger King. Who and who? I should remember that they were in the first one, especially because I only saw the first one a month ago, but like I said, a lot's happened since then. For instance, I'm going to sit back down. Ugh, ugh, there. In that time, I'm sure a third one of these movies has been made. I'm just kidding. Look at these sweet pinnacle effects that they've added to the credits. Huh, I don't see Nick Cage anywhere in this. Movie news has lied to me. Like how the first Corona Zombies was dubbed over footage of Hell of the Living Dead. This one picks Terror in the Jungle, as well as Luana the Girl Tarzan. I'm surprised at these picks. I thought for sure they would have gone with Dr. Butcher MD. It's got zombies and an Amazon jungle setting. Also, it's a James Bond movie now. Let's see how this sequel shakes things up. I just watched this movie! I see Barbie hasn't done much since part one either. Here she's still watching zombies versus strippers. And hey, didn't she die in the last one? I don't like this franchise. It has absolutely no rules! Guess these are our Barb and Star of the movie. This is gonna be the longest 72 minutes of my life. I wish I was watching something more epic and cinematic, you know, like the brain that wouldn't die. Yeah, scooch over. Social distancing, you know. Not like you weren't touching each other earlier. These girls are relatable. They're binge-watching Tiger King like the rest of us. And in case you don't know the Tiger King, it was so one month ago. There is coronavirus, and then there is Tiger King, and nothing else. What? No love for Happy Madison's The Wrong Missy? Look at how happy it's making everyone who reviewed it. I bet they're going to tackle this whole tiger controversy with plenty of dignity. This is BPN, Big Pussy Network. If this is the Big Pussy Network, can't I just binge watch The Sopranos? What we're treated to is the Joe Exotic story called The Great Catsby. Why didn't they just call the actual movie that? The dubbing features Leslie Jordan as the young Joe Exotic. You're not making me go back in the jungle again. I said I don't want to go. I hate that jungle. That's not bad casting. Though it also makes me think it's a prequel about young Shelby from Jason Goes to Hell. Here, toss my son out of a plane. It'll give him an adventure like in Temple of Doom. I've never seen terror in the jungle, but I'm sure it deserves better than this. You'll have to put your pants on. You're sitting next to a minor. You're right. I should be watching Airplane. Lil Joe Exotic is wishing this part could be recast with Bob from House by the Cemetery. And never, ever forget the groundbreaking joke of calling it the Big Pussy Network. I would joke that these pilots are drinking booze, but what do you think the dubbing is joking about? Wake me when we're back in Club 60s as fuck. Though it was nice of Frank and Estelle Costanza to also get a ride on this flight. There's lots of TV characters here. In the 60s, every flight was on the way to Eden. Yeah! You got what I wanted. You really 
I wish planes were still like this. That would cure my fear of flying immediately. And didn't this series used to sort of be about Corona zombies? 10-4 Flight 86. Captain Crunch says he's having serious issues. Oh, Captain Crunch. I get it. Like the cereal. I'd complain that the movie seems to be having some interlacing problems, but that just gives it something in common with old episodes of my show. And they got enough to worry about. To appreciate the business. Thanks, Sully. You better hurry, there's crocodiles traveling from a different time of day. This movie is just daring me to show clips from Brutes and Savages, but oh no, you can't get me that easy. I will never have... Okay, here's Brutes and Savages. Great, now I just gave them an idea for Corona Zombies 3. Dad finds out little Joe's plane has crashed, but he's busy turning into a life-size cigarette. Oh no, we're back here. He puts the XXX in Exotica, am I right? I think that's Wood Rocket's job. The girls have a plan to save the Tiger King from prison. Could you not? And they got celebrities on their side. It's no wonder that rapper and hoochie mama Cardi B has started a campaign to free Mr. Exotic. I can't imagine why people don't take celebrity opinions seriously. This Lil Joe movie isn't very intense, since we know young Joe Exotic isn't gonna die. Plus, he crashed right into that Lady Tarzan movie, while the location scouts from Cannibal Holocaust are keeping a close watch. It's a miracle this kid survived making this movie. Of course, I gotta take a shit. If you want to know what happens next, just watch that Tiger Love movie. No! Not the red one, the tiger! <laughs> Jury's still out on whether that kid survived. Mom, meanwhile, is also searching for little Joe. The suspense is killing me. Someone's down there. Joe Exotic? I'm not sure, but could be. Could be him. <laughs> Comedy! Anyway, Joe's fine. He's got the power to turn the tigers into stuffed toys. This movie's gonna need a few dozen more drinks to continue. Sorry, but we're sold out of What's Up, Tiger Lily, so all we have is this other dubbed tiger movie. Can't tell this was made fast. The forgetful actress is here. I've done enough damage. Maybe she forgot. <laughs> That's enough of that scene. Now back to fast animals, slow children. Our adventurer is Brick Fister, because of course it is! I bet these actors are sitting around today, alive and well, and so glad they were thanked in Corona Zombies 2. Another bright spot on their resume. If only I could forgive myself. I was on three tabs of blue sunshine that morning. I understand that reference. Careful, Uganda Jones is watching. <laughs> no, that's what they call him. Bet that was his name in the original, too. I'm sure Joe's fine. I'm due for a chocolate yoo-hoo and a bubble bath. I'm starting to get a serious case of swamp ass. <sighs> you know the addition of Leslie Jordan really does make this better than the first one? But can't tell if Amazon Cannibal movie or 60s Surfer Dude movie. They're getting the hell out of there. They've seen these cannibal movies. No way their testicles would survive. Oh, does the fake movie need to advertise some pizza? Ladies and gentlemen, if you like pizza, pasta, or chicken alfredo... Yeah, I'm just here for a grape crush, thank you. Guess we should get back to Barbie and Kendra since their names are in the title. Joey's a real... Entre manure. Yeah, like an entrepreneur. <laughs> Corona zombies making every forgotten exploitation movie of the past look like the African queen. I see they're driving around wanting her to go topless so she can blend in like Hell of the Living Dead. Maybe the Scarecrow King knows where Joe is. Snuffleupagus, how's business? Okay, guess that name works too. Lil Joe's in trouble. The extras from Jungle Holocaust need a snack. But that Ricky Schroeder heavenly glow hair will save him. They now worship him as a god. Quick heroes, there's no time to waste. I took Molly at a Farm Aid concert once. I woke up next to Minnie Pearl. I think the dub actors are running out of things to say. 
But back to the porn set, this movie is topical after all. The man who's the star of this is a former zoo owner who's serving a 22 year prison sentence. Allegedly hired someone to murder an animal rights activist. I'll take a look. Is that Joe Exotic? That's yeah. Joe Exotic? That's a look that says, you know, sometimes they really do ask me stupid questions. Speaking of stupid questions, the next scene is an extended interview with Tiger King star John Reinke. I expect hard-hitting journalism here. So, how did Netflix treat you, or did you make like a zillion, gadrillion, bajillion dollars? Uh, no. Mm. Can we go back to Trump's press conference? What was the interview pitch email like for this scene? So wait, it's just like stuffed, and then it's like in your living room, and you like yeah, pet it? Room. Yeah, yeah. Barbie and Kendra make Jimmy Fallon look like Dick Cavett. I appreciate their expressions that ask, so do we stay in character? Well, now I know why this movie is 12 minutes longer than the first. It's because of the interview. So what is, what is real dope? Like, is he, is he like a saint or is he like, is he like a tiger dick? Future Pulitzer Prize winners. Oh my gosh, maybe wow. he should be the Lion King because he's always lion. I best shut off my TV now. It's got a date with the bathtub. And don't forget, this is a Corona Zombies movie, sorta. Last question. Have you seen a Corona Zombie yet? Uh, I have not seen a Corona Zombie yet. And that was my day. God, I need to take a break myself. Luckily, we have our own Tiger King with whatever TV reference he's doing today. And now it's time for Lloyd's Unsolved Mysteries. Are aliens dicks? According to Stephen, the craft rotated counterclockwise, knocking him backwards and setting his shirt on fire. And this has been Lloyd's Unsolved Mysteries. The answer is yes, aliens are dicks! Now we return to Barbie and Kendra doing what all hot girls love doing, watching Terror in the Jungle. Classic father rescues boy from jungle action. There's got to be somebody who has a plane or a bulldozer that I can borrow. Ah, oh, very well. Oh, well, thank you very much, Pip. Sweet, Terry Stafford. This poor kid looks as confused about watching the making of this movie as I am watching a comedic dub of it. But hey, eventually a funny line's gotta pop up somewhere. Can't see where we're going! Okay, well, luckily for you, I'm chuckling at that while you're dodging my Indiana Jones references. I'm assuming several stuntmen were killed during the first few takes. My god, it's a pinata shaped like the coronavirus. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this one does have some better jokes. And it definitely seems like they know Amazon cannibal movie plot points. If Joe Exotic has been through this area, the villagers will tell us. Or we'll shoot them. Then again, in every scene, they still run out of things to say. Cunt. 2020 is just getting weirder and weirder. This movie is essentially a riff, and here I am, riffing a riff. Sometimes I feel like my job is really dumb, but then a line like this will happen. You like a French tip? No thanks, but I'm down to have my legs waxed. I don't think this is the Joe Exotic story. I think it's just the Leslie Jordan story. On the plus side, Disney's live-action Pocahontas remake is the best of the live-action remakes. I may have forgotten my child, but I still know how to fuck like a junkyard dog. Yep, still better than live-action Lion King, even with these soon-to-be-quotable lines. Someone took my Spanx. Ha 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 ha. Well, with comedy like that, we gotta go back to Barbie and Kendra. She's a C cup. That stands for cocoa nut. <laughs> C's like, can't see if it's I'm wearing it on my head. Good lord, this is what Beavis and Butthead would be like if they were on the Bravo network. Oh no, the tribe wants to sacrifice poor little Joe, and Dad is busy with more crammed references. That's my job. I hear you have a plane. Father Mandalorian is a pilot. Mandalorian? <laughs> That's also a popular show. I feel like every movie they use for this would be instantly more memorable with the addition of Bo Derek. And of course, with more TV references. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Excuse me, Bloomhouse killed our joy for Fantasy Island references. 
I'm mainly concerned that we're in the second movie and Barbie still hasn't properly hung up her Snoopy card. I wonder if she even thanked the person. <laughs> this is a parody gold mine. Nothing says comedy like Joe Exotic shooting at animals. Tiger King is kind of a tiger dick. Barbie and Kendra read court transcripts. So they decide not to save the Tiger King. The title is a lie! So let's go back to little Joe being an appetizer before they devour on the buttercream gang as an entree. This is a 60s exploitation flick. They might kill that kid. Just kill me so I can be put out of my misery. Let Mowgli be king. Maybe somehow teach him to put his wig on straight. Or not. He's saved because Leslie is the best thing in this series. I have no idea what's going on in the other movie, but it's got to have something to do with Mothra. Or a man-eating Venus flytrap. I will not make an Audrey 2 reference. Eh, crap, I just did. Oh, uh, oh, this plant smells like the inside of Jim Morrison's leather pants. Oh, oh. Corona zombies. All of these jokes are so perfect. How dare you question this movie being 12 minutes longer than the first? While you're gone, I think I'll go check my email. Thanks, Sardu. Now go use a crocodile's mouth as a urinal. I dare you. God, everyone is dying while trying to save this kid. They really want him to grow up to become a Netflix star. Even the gods want him alive. He will forever live a perfectly virtuous life with occasional slip-ups and a few bumps of myth. A stern reminder that it doesn't matter which version you watch, Terror in the Jungle and Tarzan Girl weren't great movies to begin with. Even one of the negative reviews for Terror in the Jungle is from the co-director himself. What in the world even is this movie? It's like if Jack London wrote Cannibal Ferox. But they are taking my Brutes and Savages comparisons very seriously. Huh, maybe Brutes and Savages was a documentary after all. Has this footage replaced my go-to Brutes and Savages reference? <laughs> of course not. This will always be my go-to bad animal attack footage. Now quick, throw the kid in some quicksand. We're in a 60s movie. He'll be fine. And if not, we got a few spare blonde kids sitting around. Woohoo, the spare kids can rest easy. He's saved. I've got quicksand in my ass crack. <laughs> Really, Corona Zombies, aren't you above fart jokes? Now that this movie is wrapped up, guess we should wrap up the other movie. What did you say your name was? <laughs> what the hell is so funny? Oh no, we gotta wrap up this movie too. They didn't save the Tiger King, but they ordered a pizza. Oh, where is our pizza guy? I don't know, but if he doesn't hustle it up, I'm not even gonna pretend like I was gonna give him a tip. Yeah, totally no. Well, that pizza guy is shitting in your food. There's terror here, though, as the pizza guy is one of the corona zombies. And worse yet, the slices are sticking out of the box. What a terrible delivery zombie. And like in the first one, the girls are thrown into another movie, but with the bonus of it being, uh, I don't know, robot wars, robot jocks, something else Charles Band related. Don't dub over those movies, or I'll have to dub over my own reviews of them like I did in the first Corona Zombies review. And yes, it does set up for another sequel. To establish a Space Force as the sixth branch. Well, it doesn't surprise me that this series is going into space. Normally it takes franchises at least four entries or five to uh, near 20 years to go into space. This one's doing 10 whole Friday the 13th movies in just a few months. But alas, I will stick with the 1978 TV pilot Space Force. Thank you very much. Unless this Space Force is really the wildly more ambitious third Corona Zombies movie. Ah, oh, Leslie Jordan was a nice touch, 
And while I'm glad that this 72 minute movie was shorter than the unnecessarily near two hour Assassin 33 AD movie, it's still longer than the 60 minute original, so I'm still gonna complain about its length even though it is under 90 minutes. Well, I guess I'll see you real soon for the third Corona Zombies movie. I'm surprised that it's not about murder hornets. Uh, oh, good. Someone else is going into the murder hornets genre. Well, that's just great. I have to watch all of these movies. I am no longer asking for the World War III miniseries. Instead, I'm just wanting actual World War III. Hey, get me the fuck out of here. Shit.